Good afternoon. We are Team Ecolution here to present our asset allocation strategy for NLPIB. So at the center of the case is the issue of divestment. We were tasked with developing and implementing an overhauled sustainable asset allocation strategy. To do this, we bifurcated our portfolio into direct and indirect segments, which combine over three stages to solve our objective. To begin with, we looked at the uh, economy of Newfoundland Labrador. The province is small, with a population of around 530,000 people, a GDP of approximately $31.5 billion, and a GDP per capita of approximately $60,000. To put that into some perspective, in purchasing power parity terms, the province is comparable to Sweden per capita. The largest industry is mining and oil extraction, which accounts for over one third of provincial GDP, as you can see. All other industries act as auxiliary support to facilitate oil and mining. As I said, the largest industry is mining and oil extraction. And as such, it cannot be divested from in the short term without causing severe economic impact. However, we have targeted two other industries that we think are ready for growth, tourism and healthcare. With four UNESCO World Heritage Sites, NL is primed to capture the coldest hot trend that countries such as Iceland and Norway have done so successfully. And as the population continues to get older, healthcare and elder care services will need to be expanded upon. Moving on to our SIP, it can be broken into three parts, return requirements, risk tolerance, and constraints. Some of the constraints pertinent to our plan include meeting increased uh, liquidity requirements in stage two to meet beneficiary payment obligations, continuing local investment in the province, determining the trade-off between direct and indirect investments in our portfolio, and balancing all stakeholder interests. And now, Harry will discuss the stakeholder analysis. Thank you, Kenan. The argument to divest or not remains a key one in this case, with each of the stakeholders taking differing stance which are often not in agreement. We start from a government that depends largely on oil and gas for its revenue and the increasing cost for environmental sustainability in the province, both locally and internationally, which implies that the government must do more to live within means and seek alternative revenue sources. Next, the taxpayers care about the level of tax in the province and will not support ESG investing if it means they will have to pay higher taxes. The pensioners on the other hand care about the high returns that they have been promised, Thus, we only support ESG investing if the pension fund can deliver these high returns. Other key stakeholders include the indigenous population and the oil and gas labor union workers. We have considered all of these stakeholders in our analysis. Given this understanding, we came up with some recommendations for the government. One, we recommend that the government set up a special, special purpose vehicle that seeks to use private funds to fund public projects. This allows the government sufficient funds to meet its growing expenditure needs without raising taxes or increasing debt in the short term. We also know that it's important for a government to have stable revenue. This is why we recommend that the government swap its volatile oil revenue for a more stable one. This may also help the government increase its credit rating. Next, we know the importance of tax in the province. This is why we recommend that the government maintain the current tax regime and in the medium to long term seek to lower these taxes. This may attract people to the province and also keep people from leaving. Lastly, we know it may be impractical to divest from oil and gas in the short term. This is why we recommend that the government put in motion a moratorium that seeks to provide a long-term divestment plan from oil and gas. This also allows enough time for an alternative industry to be developed. Now, let's think we'll talk about the indirect investment portfolio strategy. Thank you, Harry. So here are the objectives of our indirect investment portfolio strategy. We use this portfolio to provide basis to pivot to direct investment and to improve the ESG score and the greenhouse gas intensity over time. The table in the middle shows a comparison of our current holdings to Rattle 3000 index. So as you can see on screen, even though the Sharpe ratio is doing really well, the ESG score and the greenhouse gas intensity are both underperformed. So to achieve these goals, we conduct this model shown on slide. With Black Lederman and Little Wolf model, we are able to maximize our Sharpe ratio on the efficient frontier, while at the same time partially mitigate the market risk that is faced in our portfolio. In stage one, we maintain our fixed income weight to meet the liquidity needs to the pensioners, and to divest from the ETFs that give us high exposure to oil and gas industry, and invest this balance to direct investment portfolio. In stage two, we rebalance our portfolio and move part of our fixed income portfolio to uh, the public-private partnership hospital project. So this project will also give us fixed income that will support our payments to the pensioners. In stage three, we will balance our portfolio again. And in this long-term stage, we would like to focus on achieving a more sustainable and environmental-friendly portfolio. So we divest from the iron ore mining project 
and invest this balance to five high ESG and low greenhouse gas intensity managed equity indices. So these two graphs summarize our indirect investment portfolio. The, the, graph on the, on the graph on the left hand side shows a huge improvement in our greenhouse gas intensity and the ESG score. And as to our asset allocation evolution, our fixed income decreased over time while our equity increased over the stage. So next, Richard will talk about direct investment portfolio. Thank you. So to start off our direct investment asset allocation strategy in stage one, we plan to increase our current investments in St. John's Airport. Research done on the North American flight industry shows healthy growth, while increasing our investments in the airport will allow us to capitalize on the current plans for expansion and our future expectations in the growth in tourism. Also in stage one, we will tackle problem, problems faced by the province and Canada. The province is ranked fifth in waste produced countrywide, with their solid waste management strategy failing to tackle key issues. Canada itself has the highest waste per capita worldwide, contributing about 20% to national methane emissions. To solve these problems, we plan to introduce Canada's first waste energy plant. These plants are more environmentally friendly and sustainable alternative to landfills. Our plant will use the newest technology today, including new carbon catching technology. Our first plant will be introduced in a six-year plan, allowing us to educate the citizens of the province what this technology has to offer. It will also allow us to train workers for the construction of our plants. First plant will provide consistently good high returns while limiting environmental impact. In stage two, we also plan to invest in one of our recommended strategies to the government, the special purpose vehicle. With our investment, the government will be able to borrow at a much lower rate to fund the hospitals and adult care services they need. Also in stage two, we have a 10-year divestment plan from South White Rose Oil Field. Uh, potential buyers would be investors in the bigger geography and investors of surrounding oil fields. As we divest from White Rose, we plan to introduce four new state-of-the-art waste energy plants. These plants will provide many jobs for the citizens of the province. Now in stage three, we further our intent of cleaner investments by divesting in Labrador Iron Ore, the mining company. As we divest from the mining company, we will introduce three large waste energy plants, which will allow us to open up our doors to the surrounding provinces and eventually Canada. At the end of stage three, we plan to have a total of eight new state-of-the-art waste energy plants. We also estimate we can lower Canada's methane contribution by 20% and divert about 7 million tons of waste from landfills per year. Our, 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 in our asset allocation strategy, we were able to divest from oil and mining and limit our exposures to Muskrat Falls to mitigate most of the risks associated with adverse climate exposure. We also successfully concentrated our direct investments from five projects to three to mitigate concentration risk into the province. Now, here is Harry to talk about the evolution of the portfolio. Thank you, Richard. By carefully choosing our asset allocation mix over time, we have been able to deliver superior returns to our pensioners. We improved our returns from 7% at the beginning of this exercise to about 9% at the end of this exercise. And we lowered our risk significantly by doing this. We also improved our involvement in the province from 27% at the beginning of, this, of the exercise to about 54% at the end. Now, Richard will conclude. So our asset allocation strategy benefits all stakeholders and beneficiaries. We are able to provide consistently high returns while greatly limiting environmental impact of our portfolio. We did all this while still keeping the government in mind. Through our asset allocation strategy, the government will be able to decrease the reliance on oil and gas, have a better solid waste management solution, improve much needed infrastructure and healthcare and adult services, and they will now be able to put more effort in their focus on growing tourism. And the numbers speak for themselves. In our indirect investments, we, we were able to increase the ESG score and decrease the greenhouse gas intensity score while still increasing the Sharpe ratio by over 50%. In our direct investments, we have successfully divested from two environmentally detrimental industries while introducing eight new and very clean waste to energy plants. In our direct investment, we were also able to concentrate our investments from five to three, allowing us to make a bigger impact on the projects we do invest in into the province. We were able to do all this while achieving an average return of over 9% over the lifetime of our strategy. Now, two thirds of our portfolio is now focused on cleaner investments as we join others on a journey to a more sustainable and cleaner future. Thank you.